Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here, and welcome to what will be, I guess you can kind of call it a warranty repair video. Uh, this is an SX70 Alpha Executive that was sent to me by one of my clients in Singapore last year. Uh, and it was sent, I think, in the middle of the year. And I know this because it was one of the last months that I offered. Uh, you guys may not be able to see it, but I was offering switch modifications at the time. Where basically what I've done, I've got a little PCB in there and some surface mount capacitors. And by flicking that switch, you can toggle between this camera taking SX70 or 600 type film. Now, a few months later, the SX70R PCBs came onto the market, pretty much making my switch redundant, and so I no longer offered it. But unfortunately, this camera has an issue where the shutter will work maybe 9 out of 10 times, but will fail every now and again. See, right now, it's not failing. The shutter is actually opening and closing, I can see it, but for some reason, every now and again, and I can't replicate it at the moment, it ends up leaving my client with a blank black photograph. So um, what I'll be doing is removing the shutter from this camera, upgrading it to become a SX70R, and Prash and I, who, uh, Prash is the client that owns this camera, uh, him and I, because he's got his own YouTube channel, uh, are actually, well, we've already recorded, I think, the first half at least. Uh, we did a little interview where he'll be interviewing me. Um, but yeah, I figured I would just show you guys what happens when something goes wrong. And something that went wrong was, yeah, some kind of electronic failure of the PCB. Now. The interesting part about this camera is the shutter that's in it is not a true alpha spec. I had to modify it uh, to become a Model 2 shutter. And the reason for that is his original camera blew its flash fire assembly. It's a bit of a long story. Um, it's also been modified to take the chromatic parts power bar. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna further modify this camera to take the new PCB. The flash fire assembly, I didn't have an alpha model in stock, but I did happen to have this PCB, which is off an SX-70 Model 3, and I actually took out the original flash fire assembly and hand-wired, point to point, I hand-soldered in the, um, what's the word that I'm looking for here? I hand-soldered in <laughs> the flash fire assembly chip into this flash socket. So yeah, it ended up being quite the involved ordeal which is why I was so disappointed to hear that it had, it had died on me. Um, but yeah, here we have uh, my little switch. I don't know if you guys can see up there. Let's try and get yeah, a bit of focus on the camera. Um, so I've, I've actually very carefully cut and filed a little rectangular hole to allow that switch. But uh, yeah, we will not be using that. Um, and I will be getting rid of the little sticker that says that it has the switch. And of course, I'll be replacing that with a sticker that says SX70R. When I take these stickers off, it usually leaves a silver residue, so I'll clean that in a minute. Now, fortunately, that little rectangular hole uh, doesn't cause any light leaks or anything like that, and I'll be able to cover that up with a new sticker that's going to go on the camera. So, what I'm going to do, since the body of this camera has already been refurbished by myself, I'm actually just going to remove the ribbon cable from the side from the shutter and basically just desolder it like so. I'm just going to take off the insulating layer that I put there as well as the insulation from this side. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is something that I'm basically doing for Prash for cost price. I'm not charging him any, anything for labor because the camera that I built him did screw up. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the joys of dealing with 50 year old technology, I guess, is every now and again, you get faults which are a little intermittent, which you can't really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You can't really foresee. Those that are uh, close observers here will note the solenoid wire 
instead of the little metal legs that are on the flash fire assembly here. That is because, as I said, uh, the flash fire chip in here is actually hand soldered point to point using solenoid wire instead of a factory ribbon cable, which is a very involved way of doing things, but basically the only choice that I had. At the time I had no spare shutters and so other than the Model 3 one and so this was the easiest way that I could get Prash a working camera. And when it worked, it worked really well. The exposures were absolutely spot on. Prash was absolutely stoked with it. But unfortunately, it just developed that intermittent issue, it became too unreliable to shoot. And we can never really figure out why. I mean, uh, Prash does live in Singapore where it's very humid. I thought maybe, because I'm in Singapore, there's a lot of areas where you will go from like very cold air conditioning to 100% humidity outside and condensation can form. So I thought maybe condensation was forming in the switch and perhaps shorting it out. It's very difficult to know. Um, a shorted capacitor or a shorted switch would certainly cause the shutter not to fire. Uh, if the capacitor was completely removed, the camera would enter like perpetual long exposure mode. So that's the difference there. Now, as of the time of me recording this video, um, any cameras that I service do come with a one-year limited warranty. And basically what that warranty covers is anything that I've personally done to the camera, like let's say, for example, it has a short on it because my soldering was garbage and, uh, you know, I, I did something wrong. Um, obviously, I would, I would fix it completely for free. If something fails on the camera that wasn't my fault, say, you know, it blew its motor driver chip, right? Which none of us could have foreseen. Uh, then I will, I will have to sort of charge, but only for the part. Like I'm, I'm not gonna charge you for labor for something that's screwed up. So if something fails that is no one's fault and, you know, is completely unforeseeable and, and can't be preemptively rectified in a service, then I tr always try and make repairs as economically viable as possible. Even if I have to completely rip apart the camera to access the part that's failed. But that, that is, I guess, one of the advantages to uh, the modern SX-70 RPCBs is that at least the circuit board, you know, is brand new. So in theory, it shouldn't fail unless there's some kind of manufacturer error, which, you know, that can happen to anything, I guess very early on in the SX-70R production, there was a few dodgy PCBs uh, because the, the manufacturer was just using really cheap, like they weren't providing any quality control and there was like a few where they had solder bridges and things. The PCBs were fixable by reflowing some joints, uh, but they didn't work out of the box, which was very frustrating. But all, uh, all part of the joy of the world of fixing instant cameras. But yeah, it's very, very rare that I ever have to do like any kind of warranty work. Um, most of the time when people are having issues with their camera, it's generally user error. Um, and usually if something fails, it'll be like this where, you know, it's just, it's completely not foreseeable. Like every, every camera that I rebuild and service, get sent back to the owner like with a test photo of some kind. Um, and I've got, like I'm literally surrounded by just photo after photo of bits and pieces that I've been testing. So there's always proof that, you know, the camera was functioning when I sent it off, but shit happens, you know? So that's why I'm rebuilding this for Prash. He's, he's actually getting a better deal, to be honest. He's getting an upgrade out of it. So basically what I'm charging him is just a little bit extra on top of the switch mod that he's already paid for, which brings up the total price to the same as if I'd already installed the SX-70 RPCB in the first place. Now he was adamant that he paid the full amount, but I'm gonna look after Prash because he's a really nice guy. Uh, and him and his friends, Damien and Sandra have been really good clients of mine for a long period of time. Um, you know, they've bought a lot of stuff from me, had a lot of stuff repaired. Uh, because in Singapore, there's not a lot of technicians there that repair old cameras like these. 
And so the closest place to Singapore is either uh, you can go to Mint in Hong Kong or you can send to Australia, which is very, very close to Singapore. Um, all right, now I got to get this switch out. Uh, so I actually have to desolder that as well. I didn't factor that in. Uh, I think from memory, my little PCB is held in place with a screw. So I'll have to remove that in order to get to things. But yeah, this is going to end up being a better camera than if we had left it. All right, come on. Let go. There we go. Okay, so here you can see my PCB. It is held in place with a screw. So I will just remove it. And yeah, it's really hard to know exactly what caused the failure, but yeah, here is the, here is the PCB. Uh, why is this so sticky? That is... Oh, it's like the adhesive from the double-sided tape. That is very interesting. I wonder whether that was causing the fault. Because basically the, the way that I stuck this little PCB in, it's held in place with a screw, but I also had this layer of double-sided tape and it's turned into like liquid. And you can see here at the back of this tiny little PCB, there's those two points of solder. Well, that that is what actually goes to the legs that make up the capacitor and join it to the board. So. I would actually say this board works completely fine. And what we had here is either a chemical reaction that I, I couldn't have foreseen uh, on the double-sided tape or some kind of humidity fault where moisture has got in there and basically turned that into an electrolyte that carries a current, effectively causing a short. Um, that is very interesting. So yeah, I guess that's probably why it failed. Um, cause yeah, it's, it's literally like wet in here. And this has been sitting around my workshop for a few weeks while, uh, I sorted out videos and interviews and stuff with Prash. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, anyway, well, at least we've got a very plausible explanation as to why it died. Um, funnily enough, this is the only one of the switch modified cameras where I actually used that kind of double-sided tape. For all the rest, I used my standard black foam body molding tape that I generally use. Um, yeah, interesting. All right, well, I'm going to just continue to dismantle this thing. One of the things that I want to do is, uh, I want to take the solenoid out because I do actually have an alpha spec solenoid that I think will be a much better fit for the new PCB. So, uh, because this is one of the original, uh, it's the original solenoid from the Model 3 and as you guys may have seen in some of my other videos, uh, assuming I've released them by now, um, these particular uh, Model 1, Model 2 solenoids with the four pins, you do have to remove a diode from them in order to get them to work with the SX-70R. So I think just putting in that alpha spec one will be a much better solution. All right, now one of the things I am gonna do is fish out the shutter blades. Uh, I'm just gonna loosen the scrivets here a little bit and I'll just take that out, remove the walking arm. Here you can see, I don't know if you guys can see inside here, the flash fire assembly, uh, the capped on tape and all the individual copper wires. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty fine stuff making a new flash fire assembly. It's very tricky work. And what I'm gonna do is just hold the post on the scissor arm and just remove it. And then we can completely remove these shutter blades. Uh, Cause what I'm doing, I'm not entirely convinced it's 100% necessary yet because I've been doing a lot of calibration tests with the uh, SX-70R PCBs. And Polaroid 
to cut a long story short, Polaroid changed the shape of the blades from the model model two onwards, basically. And they have this kind of like what I call like a I don't know what what would you call that? It's it's sort of like like a teardrop with these weirder shaped cutouts. It's not a circle with a teardrop coming off the side. They have these like angled bits in the center. Makes it look almost like a ping pong racket, I guess. And because of that difference in the in the cutout, the SX70R PCBs, I've actually discovered, need different calibration whether you're using an SLR680, a Sonar slash Alpha, or a Model 1. Now the other thing is SX70, Model 2, Alpha, Sonar, all of those cameras have a waxy layer on the shutter blades which basically reduces friction. Now I was under the assumption that uh, because of that waxy layer, which was not problematic like uh, earlier coatings like found on the Model 1. You guys would have, if you're familiar with my video, you'd know about the Model 1 uh, SX70 blades and how they have an anti-static layer that must be removed. Well, the waxy layer on these can generally be left intact. But I've had a few restorations now. I'm just uh, off screen here, just removing the wax with some acetone. I've done a few SX70R mods by now, which seem to have been a little intermittent because the waxy buildup that Polaroid used was like too much. And it caused a little bit of inconsistency with shutter speed. So for the sake of thoroughness now, I just, I'm making a habit of, if, if I'm doing an SX70R mod where manual settings are going to be used, I actually just remove all of that layer and I'll replace it with my pencil graphite like I do with a Model 1, just so that I can ensure consistency because with the manual settings on the SX70R, they have to be really dialed in uh, accurately, as accurately as possible, or else you're just gonna get really terrible results. And your exposures when you're in manual mode are gonna be all over the place. Automatic doesn't really matter. Um, you can have very sticky blades with the SX70R. You can have very slow moving blades, fast moving blades. When you're on automatic mode, it doesn't matter because automatic mode is just dictated by once enough light has got into the shutter and got into the electric eye, the shutter will close, completing the exposure. So whether or not that happens fast or slowly, the net exposure on the SX70R PCB is the same. So exposure wise, it doesn't matter. But for the sake of consistency in manual settings, it absolutely matters. So I'm using acetone followed up by alcohol to remove all the waxy coating. And this is something that I've informed Carlisle about. I've, I've informed him of my findings. And this will now be standard instruction on his website. Um, so slowly but surely, all of the... Um, all of the technician advice on the SX70R is slowly getting more and more complicated as I figured out more and more little things that you need to do to ensure consistency. So yeah, these are um, becoming less and less of an easy thing to fit. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just using a pack of film to rest the little brass pin on, getting my lead pencil. I'm gonna color in the rear of the blade with pencil. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because coloring is fun and uh, because pencil is graphite and graphite is a form of dry lubricant and it's going to ensure that the blades don't stick together. I'm just going to bring myself a little bit of light here so that I can see what I'm doing. This doesn't have to be perfect, of course, but you really just want as much of that rear of the blade covered in um, graphite as you possibly can, just being as careful as possible because when you're going backwards and forwards, there is that tendency for the blades to want to fold back. Um, these blades are very, very flexible. They're made of plastic, but if you bend them beyond like 90 degrees, you will crease them. And although you can attempt to salvage them with a heat gun and straighten them out again, which I've done in the past, uh, they are basically irreversibly damaged when you do that. It's very hard to salvage them. Not impossible. I have done it, but just try not to bend them in the first place. That's the best practice. So.
So, just coloring him in. And that's it. We now have a fresh, as possible, set of blades. And I'm just gonna put them back in place. Starting with the blade that has the pin towards the top. Uh, let's just wind the lens forwards a little bit so I can easily get it into the slot. So yeah, this uh, board is a little bit of a hybrid of parts. Um, it is an alpha assembly, so it's got the alpha lens, it's got alpha blades, but the flash fire assembly is from a Model 3, which as far as the SX-70R PCB is concerned, it doesn't matter. The SX-70R is designed to work with any flash fire assembly. Uh, you just have to watch how you wire it up, uh, which I will need to do for this one. I'm gonna put the little scissor arm back in place. Easy, easy. And we got one side in. And yep, that's both sides clicked back down. Great. All right. Um, this little lead here, in case you're wondering, the little black lead that goes to the flash socket here, this is for a chromatic parts power bar, which you guys might have seen. I've, I've been doing a few videos recently where I featured the uh, sonar version. Basically, this goes into the flash socket and on an Alpha Model 1, Model 2, you need to modify and add this cable and a little pogo pin in the flash socket. Uh, but this basically provides six volts that goes through the flash socket and then into the six volt on the camera. So, uh, neat little invention by a guy in the UK called Dennis. Um, certainly a good option in terms of powering your camera. Uh, although personally, I think for a Model 1 and a Model 2, I think better options exist. I think you're better off, provided that you're happy to live with the extra bulk that they put on the camera. Um, I prefer to recommend things like the, um, uh, the what do they call it? The, the Polar Pack? Polar Back? The battery back that Retrospect uh, sells, which was designed by a guy called David. Um, that adds a tripod socket and strap lugs as well as powering the camera off AAA batteries. Really good solution. So certainly for a Model 1, Model 2, I think those are better. Uh, for an Alpha, um, yeah, the power bar is probably a pretty good option since it already has the, the tripod socket. Uh, right, one thing I do need to do before I put the new PCB on, I've just got to, because I made one of the legs on the solenoid wire for the flash here a little big and oversized. So I just need to burn off, here we go, a little more of the outer mylar layer so that I can solder it down. And uh, yeah, now we are ready to fit the new PCB. Now, while I've got the PCB off, I'm just going to give everything a bit of a clean uh, because that double-sided tape, I'm really sorry about that, Prash. It, it's made a real mess. Like, there's like gunk everywhere. I've, I have no idea what happened. Like it's, it's really left residue, which is very strange. Anyway, it's fine. Your camera's getting an upgrade now. And I'm just gonna grab a box, which I keep all of my spare PCBs in, uh, once Youngmin sends them to me. So I'm gonna grab a brand new, fresh SX-70 RPCB. This is absolutely the latest batch that they have. I've only just received them as of the other day. So Prash, you could not be getting a fresher board if your life depended on it. And uh, the cool thing about Prash having waited is I've just discovered new ways to calibrate the SX-70R PCB that make it super accurate. So, uh, and as well as easy to easier to calibrate than, than it was in the past. All right, now I'm 99% sure that I have to wire this so that pins two and pin, pin one and pin two both attach to pad one, but I'm gonna do it pin to pad because I don't know what variant of the flash fire assembly 
the SX70R, uh, sorry, the SX70 Model 3 that I took the chip from. I don't know what one it used. And so if my way of wiring this is wrong, well, the worst case scenario is the flash just isn't gonna work, and that's fine. But if I wire it wrong, uh, then what's gonna happen is the flash will continuously trigger. So, yeah, sorry, I, I got that wrong. I'm supposed to wire it, I'm 99% sure, so that pins one and two both go to pad one. So I just have to shorten the length of my little pin there. Uh, now, if the flash doesn't fire, I will have to lift the leg and move it over, but I'm pretty sure that the Model 3 I'm 99% sure that this is how I'm supposed to do it, so... Pop a bit of solder on there. Press it down with a screwdriver until it dries. So fiddly. The wires are much harder to solder on than the original legs. There we go. All right. Yeah, so that should work. All right, now I just have to do the rest of the points and of course we have to wire in a new solenoid. So that's gonna sit like that. Now this solenoid seems very adjustable. I'll just make sure it's in good shape. Uh, if I can find my solenoid adjusting screwdriver, my special, special one. Where did I put it? Ah, sitting right in front of me. I'm just gonna make sure it's adjustable before I put it in. if I've got another one. That one is pretty adjustable, but I think it could be a wee bit better. Mm, nope. Uh, what's this? I think this one is looking pretty good as well. Not bad. I think I'll just use this one. Cool. But since this is, this was a, a solenoid that I was using for experiments uh, and I actually put on the spring from an SX-70 Model 1, which is a little higher tension. And this one is actually designed for the spring from a Model 2. So if I can just get this off. There we go. Put that spring there. Put on the slightly less tense spring. Yeah, that's better. Okay, that is far more in spec with what I would expect. So we'll slide this little dude in. Now these, this is probably going to be far too slow. Yeah, <laughs> far too slow, but that's okay. It's going to be adjustable. Uh, so there we go. I'll take the solenoid screw and we basically want to line it up sort of so the left leg lines up with the left pad. Uh, and I think I just nailed it pretty much out of the box just then. Yeah. Closing it all the way provides a complete lightproof seal. And then using a bit of heat, I'm going to bend down the other leg and 
and just fix that solenoid in place. Looking at the positioning, making sure it's looking good. Great. So that should be an ideal candidate for calibrating this board. All right, two things left to do. Because <sighs> all of that is wired in. Oh, actually three things left to do. One, I've got to wire in all the switches and the secondary solenoid for a flash because <laughs> the board ain't gonna work without that. Cables are just sticking up a little bit. I want to try and flatten them down. That's better. Much better. Okay. All right. Now I've got to put the ribbon cable back on and in place. And then the last thing I have to do is attach that little six volt power, which is basically going to go to the third pin. So. Usually this is much easier with the ribbon cable, of course, being off the camera, but considering the camera is already reskinned and 100% refurbished, I'm not going to rip the entire thing apart just to redo uh, the ribbon cable on the, on the side of the body. So that's why I'm kind of dangling the shutter off like this. Normally I obviously wouldn't wire it on like that, but uh, for this time I have to because the body is already in perfect condition because I refurbished it back in July last year. All right, so ribbon cable is gonna go in first. I'm just making sure all the pins and pads line up. Great. all attached. Now the last thing that I need to do is move this wire completely into place. So I'm basically just gonna bend a little 90 degree into it so that I can move it over and get it wired in. But I think because of the difference in, oh no, hang on, that should work. I was just gonna say, I might need to lengthen the wire a little bit because of the difference in PCB, but it's okay, I can make this work. Great. Just making sure I can do this as neat as possible. There we go. Ah, beautiful. All right. And, yeah, there we go. Just got to move the wire around a little bit, massage it until it's in place. Okay, perfect. All right, what's left to do now is just box this up. Uh, here is how I've wired everything up. Let's get some more light on that so you guys can see everything that I'm looking at. 
Come on. Focus camera. Today would be nice. Yeah, there we go. That should be a good enough view. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to insulate both sides with a bit of electrical tape and calibrate this thing, come back with some results. All right, one completely finished SX70 RPCB SX70 Alpha Executive. I mean, I'm not really sure it gets any cooler than that, guys. Um, the power bar attachment works exactly as it should. Um, there's currently a pack of film in there, so if I remove that, though, there's absolutely nothing. And uh, the camera still functions, getting its power through the flash socket. Uh, of course, we then have the optional dongle, which I've already calibrated to this particular camera. Let's bring my lamp up so you guys can see it a little bit better. I will turn the power on. It's going to scan. It's going to pick up the camera. And then just to show you guys that it's functioning, uh, let's do a nice slow shutter speed, maybe two seconds. So there you go, Prash. Sorry about the uh, dick around with your old uh, SX70. Um, but at least in disassembling it, I figured out where the issue would have lied. And uh, not that I'm offering these switch mods anyway, but certainly if I was, there's no way in hell I would reuse that double-sided tape ever again. Um, on the subject of switch mods, the reason that I'm not offering it these are a lot of work to solder up and custom install onto clients' cameras. It is actually less work <laughs> to put the SX70 RPCB on, uh, except for, of course, the calibration, which does take a bit of time. Um, but it is basically the same amount of effort, and the SX70 RPCB just does so much more. 600 film speed, SX70 film speed, it does self-timer, it does uh, EV19 right the way down to EV1 way more features, way less screwing around for me, and you get that benefit of the new circuit board. So um, I had to charge, uh, yeah, basically only slightly less to do this mod that I did to completely upgrade stuff. So that's why you don't see me offering that switch mod more often. But uh, yeah, I am super stoked with how this camera has turned out. Now, on its way to me in the post at the moment, being shipped through DHL is a Polaroid i2, which also belongs to Prash. And oh, I reckon it would be a little bit of fun if I compared the two cameras side by side. They do offer very similar functionality after all, manual control, uh, built-in uh, settings, the ability to take i-type film, a built-in self-timer, I believe. I'm, I'm pretty sure the i2 has that. Um, tripod socket, so they're going to be pretty much on paper as close as you can get. The only thing that Prash's camera doesn't have is, of course, autofocus, being that it's an alpha, but Prash doesn't care much for autofocus anyway. So uh, I will be messaging him very shortly, telling him all the good news that his camera was successfully able to be converted, and uh, yeah, you guys may see this again in a future video. Uh, I'm going to head off and do some other work to clients' cameras this afternoon. Thank you all for watching what will be a fairly short video, I imagine. Uh, as always, if you like what I do, please feel free to donate through my coffee account or send something for me to be re uh, repaired. Um, send me something to fix or modify or customize. If you want your PCB upgraded, feel free to send it my way. Uh, and most importantly, like subscribe and share the channel if you dig what I do. Any mention of me that you put online helps a lot in terms of my business surviving and as I've said a few times this is pretty much my full-time career now which is something I never thought that I'd ever be able to say. So thank you to all of those that support me and I will see you in the next video. Happy shooting!